welcome everybody again. I think before I start, we will go through one work package one, two, three, four, and five. But first, I would like to thank Pauline for all the work that she did in the last two years, actually, to bring us all here together now. So thank you very much for all the efforts. Uh, <laughs> so, work package one. We were asked to introduce ourselves and the three sub-projects. Uh, so I have a very short slide about myself. And actually looking at this, I realized that my own career is a little bit circular. Because when I studied, my last part of my environmental studies was about the first recycling projects in the Netherlands. We did the third one and we were so crazy to ask people to separate their waste. Not the first two experiments were about separating it in two parts and we asked to separate it in three. So that's the first couple of things we did over there. And then from that I traveled a little bit to anything related to business and environmental issues and uh, supply chains. Somewhere in the middle I was engaged in eco-industrial parks, that's where I met Pauline also in those days, and how to implement these kind of things, that's around end of the 90s. Uh, some... And then recently it came back to me again, so the issue of circular economy, because it's very, uh, well, very popular in the Netherlands as well and that made me write an article about Circle Economy 3.0, which I prefer to name it. And actually, apart from going into the, the discussion of that, I would like to present a little personal case study, which gives me the floor to introduce also the three uh, work packages, or the three uh, projects in the work package. Um, uh, that is over here. I, this is my personal case study. I moved last year to a new house and this uh, cupboard, wall cupboard became obsolete. So I didn't want to throw this away. Uh, we moved uh, to a beautiful new house, very environmentally soundly, but there's quite some emotional uh, energy attached to this, uh, uh, this cupboard because I bought it actually when I was a, just started as a PhD. So it was my first money earned and I did a very environmental conscious decision because this was a system which you could adjust over time. It was popular, it's not known outside the Netherlands I think. But it was life cycle proof etc. But after 30 years there's no place for it anymore. So what to do with this? Uh, and the emotions are there, my kids grew up playing uh, around it etc. What to do with this? Well I wrote this nice <laughs> article about all these R's, but yeah, resell or reuse it at least. So I try to actually do that, uh, that's very important. Um, so I don't want to put it on the street, eh? that's what some people still do if your, uh, your furniture is left over, you, every now and then they come. You cannot put it uh, with the weekly uh, rest waste collection in the Netherlands, it's not allowed, so they come just two or three times a year. But the better option Actually, the, also the province in the Netherlands promotes the better solutions as well, for example. And they have this nice uh, website for the population uh, showing what you can do. Do more with waste, they call this. So what can you do? You can either still bring it to a waste separation street where you can bring all the big things and the normal small things are uh, on the street uh, collected separately in four different uh, containers. Uh, but if I put it there, what's going to happen? There is actually, there are always these charity organizations where you can put stuff that can still be used and then you hope that it comes into a shop and somebody will still buy it. But I'm not sure because I know from the storylines that there's so much supply that they're very critical and it may still end up as, well, still in the wood uh, stream. In the, and, but probably if you do that, it would be burned. So, I looked for selling it or giving it away. I don't want to have money for this. So we have in the Netherlands the Dutch eBay Marktplatz. We put it over there, no response. Then, interesting, I moved to a new neighborhood and there's a little community also online. So I said, well, just come and collect it. You can have it. They have people moving, so maybe some are looking for it. No reply. <laughs> then there was one for the, 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 the whole village where I now live. And yes, there was one lady, very happy, she would collect it. But three times she postponed it, and she postponed it, and she postponed it, all kinds of storylines. 
Okay, what is the next option? We have these uh, um, yeah, recycle shops as well. Also in the little village where I moved in. So I went to them. I actually, I had to take it apart, so it had to be rebuilt. It's a bit difficult to sell it in a shop then. Uh, but they said, yes, yes, come and bring it next week and you, we will put it over here. So next week I put everything in my car, I drive over there. No, but we're not going to take this. <laughs> so, then I had to take it back home again. <laughs> and I, don't, I didn't want to take it out of the car again. So, well, next step. I looked at the internet and once before we found this little shop, that's quite interesting, Second Hands Lundia. Very specialized in this very nice type of cupboards and they have a shop in Soetermeer near The Hague, one near, the, near Amsterdam. So I called them, I have the stuff in my car, can I bring it? And they said, yes you can. And yes, it's, well I had to drive 70 kilometers with it. <laughs> so if this is really environmental sound, I don't know anymore. <laughs> but I got there and they had this, well it's not a very attractive hall, but they had all, all they, they were selling it. Actually, they were selling it at the place. And I actually got 30 euros for it and a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what does this bring us? Uh, one question is from the consumer side, is there anyone as crazy as I am? <laughs> I'm not sure. But this is what we're telling about. Eh? The, the key story is to make these shorter loops uh, easier because we organize this quite well. This is the mass uh, stream recycling. And this is where work package one is partly looking at. The other one is that there is a, oh, this is not a good picture for that. I have another one. There is a leakage of this kind of stuff to the developing world. So we don't, do not really clearly know exactly what is happening there. So that would bring me to the, wait a minute. The three work packages or the three sub packages here. And that I don't want to do on my own. So, Martin, maybe you can present yourself a little bit and uh, have a short introduction of yourself. And then, just very short. Uh, <laughs> a little bit more than before, but we, we have to move to the question mostly, I think. But. Um, so just to, I'll, I'll try to be as short as possible. Uh, so yeah, my name is, uh, well it's there obviously. Uh, <laughs> I work back at 1.1. Uh, so before my, my background is uh, international development studies. Uh, so it's a bit more uh, with international cooperation and the humanitarian aid sector. And then there I specialize more in environmental topics. Um, I, uh, I later went to uh, do a master in uh, sustainable urban development. Uh, and uh, and I've, I've been working in the humanitarian uh, sustainable development sector uh, for, for about five years before uh, applying here. Uh, so, yeah, um, that, that should be about Yeah, today. okay, then Martin will be working on... Yes? yes oh, sorry. So <laughs> I, I have like, this research question that obviously is very basic and not ready yet, but I'm, I think uh, maybe it's, it's a bit too long as well. <laughs> Uh, so it's basically what are the key similarities and differences in the academic, private and public discourses and policies regarding the circular economy and do these discourses reflect a transformative or reformist interpretation of the concept and what discourses lead to better sustainability outcomes. So really it's like three parts. First are assessing the, the discourse itself in the three um, sectors, you know, private, public and academic. Then looking at uh, the a bit the actors and who they are in the system in the general uh, kind of social economic structure and political structure and what they represent and why that uh, how that can explain the discourse they have as well and then finally seeing a bit the outcomes uh, that that discourse uh, leads to in terms of sustainability uh, well especially for the public and the private obviously yeah. uh, and, uh, and and whether uh, some discourses perhaps are a bit uh, lead to better outcomes or, 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 or less so yeah. Um, yeah. so that's yeah. Yeah, you had another slide, but I think we need to keep it fairly short indeed. So there's something about uh, methodology. But this, this links very much to the, the figure which I gave is a sort of comprehensive mapping of the discourses at the moment. But we see that there are very different interpretations 
uh, and different speeds in the process of going to a circular economy. So this, this really gives some uh, challenges of what are the implications of well, maybe mis misunderstanding each other and having different focus on, on what we try to achieve. So that's the, the challenge there. Then the second work package is Kieran. Where's Kieran? Hi, I'm Kieran. Um, <laughs> I did my BA actually in history at the University of Sussex, so a little bit far removed from, from where I am now. And then last year I did environmental geography at the University of Amsterdam and wrote my thesis on the circular transitions at the city level to think about urban spaces. And for work package uh, 1.2, I'm looking at the, the government governance practices that are existing across Europe, and then thinking about strategies for creating these short loops, uh, circularity options. Yeah. With the uh, Volta showing with his example, the uh, the longer kind of uh, circularity yeah. option is quite yeah, set up at the moment. So thinking about ways that we can shorten those. Yeah, that would be over here so the policy this links uh, this figure which i showed this r7 is the mass flow recycling which has been successful in quite some countries in northwestern europe the challenge is what is being done with the collected materials and can we upgrade the application of it uh, often there are very low uh, quality applications of the recycled materials and we'll go through a couple of the various waste streams to see how that can be uh, dealt with uh. then the third package well, where is it? Kaustub? Yes, uh, my name is Kaustub and I have, my background is philosophy, and so I'm a bachelor's and then environmental policy and management from the masters. So, and now I'll be looking at 1.3, which will look at the leakages in the circularity. Yeah. So I'll be focusing on the mostly illegal waste that goes to developing nations and there's a it touches a few dimensions of global north for versus scope of global south and their approach to sustainability and also the European Union is losing a lot of resources and money because of the illegal waste and also there's a big problem, environmental problem like Bali showed in the beginning so both in the north and south so yeah. are to so yeah. can be done yeah. to, uh, to find a solution. We don't have anything here because Kausu just started last week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's uh, work package one.